Um, well, today I, I thought well, you know, it was tough mentally, you know, get, obviously to go into such a match knowing I'm qualified and uh, he needed it so much and I didn't quite need it that much. You play against a guy that is dominating tennis in a way that uh, it was a long time ago that somebody did like this. So maybe you play with more pressure than against any other guy. But as I said, you have to take your chances, otherwise you lose. It's the end of the road for Moya, the first player to leave the 2004 Masters Cup. In the morning, the press are still considering the set that Federer lost to Moya the night before. Maybe the number one is beatable after all. I mean, Carlos Moya played really well last night, didn't he? But still came close, but not quite close enough. Federer? He's beatable, but uh, he'd have to be slightly below his best. It will be close. It won't be as easy as he would like, but uh, I think Federer is supreme at the moment. Uh, I think Federer will win. I think he's the most complete player I've maybe ever seen. Obviously, he's the biggest star Switzerland has ever had. And, uh, and sometimes he invents shots that nobody thought were possible. I think he's bigger than the biggest mountain we have in Switzerland. For the rest of the players, thoughts of beating Federer will have to wait. It's a crucial day, at the end of which three players will leave the competition. Marit Safin will play Tim Henman in the night match. The winner will go through to the semi-finals. It's a good situation, I think. You know, we both know where we stand. And the winner goes through and the loser doesn't, so... No, I'm looking forward to it. As well as practicing before his match with Henman, Safin is rapidly finding some new fans. Safin is just beautiful. <laughs> 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 Definitely. <laughs> he disappeared for a while, but now that he's back, he's got a lot of support. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Roddick will play Correa. If he beats the out-of-form Argentine, he could play Leighton Hewitt in the first semi-final tomorrow morning. Hewitt looks fairly relaxed as he prepares for a must-win match against Gaston Gaudio. Thanks, man. Okay, well done. Cheers. While Hewitt makes short work of Gaston Gaudio, Correa is preparing for his meeting with Andy Roddick, and he's still trying to get some extra strength in that right shoulder of his. Hewitt, meanwhile, has secured his place in the semi-finals. For Gaudio, his first Masters Cup is over. He has failed to win a single match in the round-robin stage of the tournament. Correa may well be on the same plane back to Buenos Aires tonight. He's showing some of the form that has taken him to the tournament as one of the top eight, but it's not enough against the world number two. Do you feel that maybe your level is getting back to where you were perhaps before you took that injury break? Yeah, I know I still have to improve my serve and the timing in certain areas of the court. But I'm very happy with my performance today. Correa is only 22 years old. His body should recover. But when you're 30 and the oldest player in the top eight, staying fit is a constant battle. And that's probably the, the third time that nail's come off this year. So I'd like to think that, you know, I'll stop on my own terms. It won't be when my body just gives up and says no more. Um, but it's, yeah, that's part of the challenge, isn't it? Because uh, um, it doesn't recover quite as quickly as it used to. Mm? 
Penman knows that there may not be many more chances of playing in a Masters Cup event. He must be focused, fit and ready to take on the Russian challenge. Losing will result in an early trip home. Stadium, eager with anticipation, waits for the start of the match. There's strong support for both players, but it's the Russian fans who are first to find their voices. Safin breaks Henman's serve in the first game of the match. The British supporters are seeing their player outclassed and outgunned by the Russian. It's a nervous time. Henman is playing below his best. At 5-2 to Safin in the first set, they could be in for a short match. It's all going to plan for Safin's coach, Peter Lundgren. Marit Safin takes the first set, 6-2. Henman has been in this situation before. He knows that the match is far from over. In the second set, honors are far more even. The West Side Club is treated to some quality tennis. Henman attacking at the net, Safin finding the lines from the back of the court. Neither player can break the other's serve. There's nothing to separate them. Henman must win a second set tiebreaker to stay in the tournament. Once more, it's so near and yet so far for the British star. He loses the match and with it, his chances of playing in the semi-finals tomorrow. It's a journey, it's a learning process, and I think the minute you think you can't, you can't improve or you've, you've stopped improving, then you're done. I couldn't be more excited about, you know, next year and, and what lies ahead. See you later, boys. Everybody, let's get up and give them a great welcome to the semifinals when they come in the stadium. What a match this is going to be. Here Let's meet the players. He's finished the year at number one twice, Please welcome the wonder from the land down under, Leighton Hewitt. He's currently the number two player in the world. Please welcome the all-American boy from just down the road in Austin, the kid back in the big heat, Andrew. It's semi-final day at the Westside Club in Houston. Of the original eight players who qualified for the tournament, half survive. By the end of the day, another two will be on their way home. Ready? It's a big match for both Hewitt and Roddick. If the Australian wins the tournament, he will take over the Americans' number two ranking. Despite its billing, the first semi-final takes everyone by surprise. The American can't get his game together. Everything seems to be working out of sync. Unlike Hewitt, who's pumped up and playing at the very top of his game. He takes the first set with all the fire that's expected from this Australian. In the second set, the crowd are stunned by an all-out Australian attack. Andy Roddick's dreams of winning the Masters on home soil is turning into a nightmare. He loses the last 20 points of the match to Hewitt, and the semi-final is over. A shell-shocked Roddick leaves the court. His disappointment is clear to everyone. All the hard work, all the hours on the practice court and in the gym have ended in a defeat, the manner of which he could never have imagined.
Thank you. As Marit Safin and Roger Federer make their way to the other semi-final, Roddick is still coming to terms with his loss. Andy, can you describe or explain what happened out there? I wish I could. Um, I, I just, I, I think it's plain and simple. I just, I didn't play well. And he, he took his chances, you know, when he had them. I'm just going to try to remain in denial about today. <laughs> can you ever recall at, in, at any time having a finish like that, losing the, 20, the last 20 points? No, bud. Over on court, Federer is having none of Roddick's problems. He's cruising through the first set against Safin. <laughs> Meanwhile, Andy Roddick is babysitting his young nephew, a welcome distraction from his earlier defeat. Um, obviously, I'd, I'd love to play well, you know, close to home and at a place that I love playing at. You done with that? So, uh, you know, it's disappointing, but at the same time, you know, there were, there were a lot of positives to take out of this week as well. Still pretty lucky, you know, so I, I think you could just kind of have to keep things in perspective a little bit. And, um, you know, as much as you want to think that this is the be all end all, it's, it, it's not all the time. But, uh, you know, it's still disappointing. Still kind of mad at myself for playing the way I did. But, you know, in, in sports, they're, they're going to be ups and downs. So you just kind of have to try to deal with the losses as well as the wins. There are worse jobs to have. <laughs> Back on court, it's not going all Federer's way. Both players have broken each other's serve and they're heading for a second set tiebreaker. Second set tiebreaker in the Federer Safin semi final ends up being one of the highlights of the entire week. Neither man is able to gain the initiative. Both players get frustrated as match point after set point goes begging. The atmosphere and tension on court is unbearable. Federer and Safin desperately try to keep their nerve but time and again, the final shots let them down. The match hangs in the balance. It becomes one of the longest tie breaks in tennis history. Both men hang on to the second set like their lives depend on it. For Marit Safin, his Masters Cup future is at stake. At 18 all in the tie break, his nerve falters. He serves a double fault. Federer has a match point on his own serve. The defending Masters champion doesn't need another opportunity. 2018, and he's through to the final against Hewitt. As for Marit Safin, he'll join Andy Roddick on his way out of the 2004 Tennis Masters Cup. Can you wake up? Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. I was nervous, I was under pressure, because we're not focused, we're not ready, it's normal. I had to come back strong and to play great Masters again, you know, makes me very happy. I've won all my round robin matches in my career, and um, now I've got a chance again to, to actually win it back to back, that would be fantastic. 5.15 we have to leave. 5.15 from hotel? 5 okay. Hotel right. We were pushing each other to the, to the limits, and uh, that tiebreaker was very special. Uh, I've never played a, you know, tiebreaker in a match. I don't remember even in a practice, you know. So this is uh, that was really fun, really. Does it give you more pride that kind of victory than a straight sets crushing of somebody? Well, I prefer straight sets crushing. <laughs> 